the humble honeybee. Hey, little guy. Once as much a part of the English summertime as warm beer, cricket, gray skies, and relentless drizzle, but not anymore. This great big story is by BP. Fewer emissions, more energy. This is the Global Energy Challenge. Every beekeeper's guilty secret is that they don't produce the honey, the bees do. So when we win prizes for our honey, I was acutely aware that the bees made the honey and that it could be that I'm just a random idiot showing up um, in a bee suit every now and then, and they're the guys who are doing the really clever stuff. Across London, rooftops are buzzing with a new kind of industry. The conundrum is that the bees in the country are in decline. But why are bees thriving in the big smoke? London has a heat bubble, so earlier spring, later autumn, longer forage time, good for bees. Has more variety of forage because you have the municipal plantings, the parks, and that means that, like human beings, a variety of food sources is good for bee health. So London is basically a bee superfood street market, but in the countryside, they've got a big problem. In the countryside, people have gone for monocultures, one simple crop planted in a large area. It will all flower at the same time and it will all pot over at the same time. It will all be harvested at the same time, which causes this cliff edge for the bees once things have really built up strongly. End of flowers, straight down, nothing to eat. The buzz in beekeeping circles is that solar farms can make a difference. Lightsource BP is a solar developer, and some of their farms in the UK are helping to support the honeybee with bespoke, safe, and locally cultivated bee superhighways. Solar farms can provide a much needed source of renewable energy as the challenge to meet rising demands with fewer emissions continues. We find sites and then we build solar parks. We generate electricity and we sell it back into the grid. All of these lands previously, before we've entered into them and developed them, have just been intensely agriculturally farmed. So you've got a lot of pesticides and herbicides that have actually destroyed the land. So what we've done is replant wildflower meadows and that's when the idea is sort of growing. Can we add the beehives in? So we spoke to bee experts, um, and, and, and that's fucking <laughs> bee. And <laughs> well, if you introduce bees somewhere that has a positive impact, if they're going to pollinate, then there's more plants to forage on, and there's a lot of animals that eat those plants. You know, that, that's the start of the whole process. We get a local beekeeper, and they have the hives. We then split the honey 50-50 between ourselves. This sweet sanctuary is not just helping to save the honeybees, but also provides solar power, a renewable source of energy. And the panels on this site alone produce 24.3 megawatts of energy, enough to power 6,770 households. We're in a revolution at the moment for solar. It is happening and it's going at a speed exponentially more than we all thought. I want to go in and tell people what the advantages of a solar park are, and it's not just clean energy. I want to tell them what the local benefits are, which is pollination. I think it's just a cause for celebration. You know, you've got one ancient craft, one new technology. It's like having a grandfather with a grandchild on his knee. And there is a poetry when you see those two things together. And as the world transitions to lower carbon energy, solar will play a big part in the mix. And so we expect to see a lot more of these pop up across the countryside. Power for the people and helping to protect some of the pollinators. Now that's a sweet story.